Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I a a a a a ha he he. Fellow mathematicians, welcome back to na video. Another episode on Papa Fleming's Advent Calendar. Calendar. Ca whatever. It's the thing with 24 videos. And today is the first day, I suppose. And today we are going to talk about the supposedly easiest but also hardest derivative. Namely the derivative of e to the x. We all know that we are just going to get our planar boy e to the x out. But have you ever tried getting yourself the derivative using first principle? If not, try it out for yourself. And once you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. By the way, don't forget to support the advent calendar by using link <laughs> over on my spring shop to get 15% of all the merch over there and also 10% over on stemmerch.com. So check it out and support the channel this way. And now we're going to dive right in. So if you're not familiar with the first principle, this is like the generalization, the more formal version of the regular derivative. We know that ddx of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, nice. But if we have just this graph, just a quick little reminder of e to the x, for example, then we can approximate the slope on this curve at a, at a certain point x0 as being just um, basically a tangent line or a, a secant in this case running from here to there. And we can calculate the slope of a linear function, which is here, by getting ourselves the rise over the run. Rise over run, I think that's what it's called in English. So we get um, the difference in f of x divided by the difference of the x coordinates. Or if we write all of this out, we are going to get f of x minus f of x naught because well, we want to find the slope at that point divided by x minus x naught. Now this right here gives us just an approximation but if we bring the point x even closer to x naught infinitesimally close so infinitely close we are going to get a problem 0 over 0 and this is why we use the limit on the so-called difference quotient to get ourselves a formal derivative of the form um, f prime at the point x naught that we are seeking after is the limit as x goes to x naught of f of x minus f of x naught divided by x minus x naught. And we all know what f of x is. In our case, it's nothing other than the exponential function e to the x. So let us plug everything into this definition of the derivative. That right here is the first principle, giving us the limit as x goes to x naught of e to the x minus e to the x naught divided by x minus x naught. And this form right here is not the most preferred method of getting yourself the formal derivative. Most people like the h method more. Now here you just going to introduce a new substitution. We are going to give x minus x naught down here a new name. So what we are going to do is we are going to say let x minus x naught go to a new variable most people call it h i'm going to call it x once again because this is just a different version of the first principle giving us in the process the limit as our new x approaches what original x approached x naught so what happens if we plug x naught in the limit into x minus x naught well obviously it goes to zero so a new limit is x going to zero of e to the remember x is now nothing other than this right here is just an equation you could say and if we add x on both sides then the old x is going to be substituted by x plus x naught minus e to the x naught nothing's going to change here this is just a constant divided by our new x you can also call it h if you're confused by that okay um this right here is the so-called H method or the second formulation of the difference quotient. You can also write it like this. Uh, limit as x goes to zero or h goes to zero um, of f of x plus h minus f of x. Or in our case x naught because this is the point we are looking at. Seems familiar because it is. This is just what it is. And now from this point onwards, we can start to factor out a bunch of things. So you might notice that e to the x plus x naught is the same as e to the x times e to the x naught. So we can write this right here out. And we, now we have e to the x naught as a common factor on both. So we can factor it out. And now the limit doesn't really um, 
involve our e to the x naught because x naught is just a constant overall, the, the point we are looking for, um, or, or a certain spot, meaning we can drag it to the outside of the limit, giving us e to the x naught, and this is what we are looking for, um, times the limit um, as x approaches zero of e to the x minus one divided by x. Now, what we now need to show, if you are familiar with derivatives, is that this limit right here is in fact equal to 1. And this is not easy to show. We are going to do it today, but hear me out on this one. We are going to make use of one of the definitions of the exponential function. There are many definitions, for example, the definition of the exponential function as the limit. This is the one that we are going to use later. Um, of this 1 plus 1 over x, uh, 1 over n to the nth power. We are going to use this later. Or we have the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function. And in the normal case, all of those definitions are equivalent to, to one another, meaning you can prove that the Taylor series expansion can lead as an Im implication to the limit definition and the other way around giving us an equivalence. Now, this piece of shit right here is the only definition which only follows from one of the other definitions or all the other definitions as an implication. With this definition of the exponential function alone, or showing that this is equal to 1, you can never show that um, this right here is equal to 1 of the other definitions. So you also need to make use of the other definitions to show that this right here is something to do with the exponential function, um, which is a bummer and I think there is not a way. At least this is what I still know from my anal um, two cores, I suppose. But nonetheless, we are going to manipulate this a little bit more to get ourselves out that this is indeed one, in fact one, this definition right here. Um, okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the exponential function in here. We are going to substitute once again. And for this, I'm going to say let e to the x minus one be equal to t, for example. Meaning if we were to solve for x, because this is what we have done here, we are going to get e to the x. Um, is equal to t plus 1 and now we can take the natural log on both sides giving us overall that x is equal to the natural log of t plus 1. Now what happens if x goes to 0 on our original limit, 0 plus and also 0 minus both work, we are going to get 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. So t also goes to 0 in the limit, leaving us overall with e to the x naught times the limit as um, t approaches zero of the, um, no, we are going to get t up here divided by the natural log of t plus one. And we are almost there. There's not much more to do, not a whole lot more. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to manipulate this a tiny little bit. As mentioned before, we want to use one of the definitions of the exponential function to get ourselves out that this limit is in fact equal to one. For this, I'm going to do a bit of algebra fuckery. Um, I'm going to say that t is the same as 1 divided by 1 over t. Does that make sense? If you take the reciprocal of 1 over t, you are going to get t out and t times 1 over log of t plus 1. It's just a thing that we had before, namely this one right here. Now, what's cool about this is that we have a complex fraction and we can track the 1 over t down here into the denominator, leaving us overall with e to the x naught times the limit as t goes to 0 of um, 1 divided by 1 over t times the natural log of t plus 1. All right. Now, next up, what we are going to do is we are going to make use of the logarithm rules. Namely, if we have something multiplied by a logarithm, we can take the something and turn it into the exponent of the argument of the logarithm. Leaving us overall, if we were to drag it into here, with e to the x naught times the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 divided by the logarithm of, and then we are going to get t plus 1 to the 1 over t. And we are almost there, almost there. Last thing we are going to do is we are going to introduce the 69th um, iteration of a substitution for today. Namely, I want to get rid of the 1 over t here. So we are going to say let um, 1 over t be equal to, I don't know, s. I really don't give a shit. Now, if we plug this in, what about the limit? Uh, t going to 0 implies that s is going to go to infinity overall. Meaning our new limit is going to go to infinity. 
So this is equal to e to the x0 times the limit as s approaches infinity of 1 divided by the natural log of now t is the same as 1 over s by this new substitution and 1 over t is equal to s. So we are going to get um, 1 plus 1 over s to the s. And now here's the last part. We are going to make use of the limit rules now. And under the condition that the limit on each and every part, numerator and denominator of a quotient exists, we can distribute the limit into the numerator and denominator. Now, the limit as s approaches infinity of 1 is just a constant. We don't care about that. Now, what we only have is the limit being down here in the denominator. Now, what is the cool thing about the logarithm? The logarithm is indeed a continuous function from uh, on its whole dom domain. Do domain. It's so mean with the domain. On its whole domain. Meaning what we can do is we can track the limit to the inside of the logarithm. Leaving us overall with e to the x0 times 1 divided by the logarithm of the limit as s approaches infinity of um, 1 plus 1 over s to the s power. And here is the final part and now you might say oh holy hell Papa Flemmy I did not see that coming maybe I did because of the other substitutions down here but this is very nice. This right here is one of the definitions of the exponential functions which we need to use to show that this is indeed part of the exponential function in some kind of way. One of the definitions that makes the exponential function. Namely, we have that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus um, t divided by x to the x power is indeed e to the t. This is one of its many definitions of the exponential function, one of six, I suppose. Now, what is our t? Our t in our case here is going to be 1. So this whole limit inside of the logarithm is the same as e to the first power, leaving us overall with e to the x naught times 1 divided by the natural log of e to the first power. And the natural log of e to the first power is just 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1, giving us overall the big fat conclusion of f prime at the spot x naught is equal to e to the x naught. And hence we are done and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today and this is probably something you have never done before um, using first principle without Taylor series expansions in there to show that, um, that we do indeed um, have the derivative of the exponential function being itself. I know it's kind of cheating once again but as mentioned before there is this one single definition down here of the exponential function which doesn't have the implication the other way around to make it equivalent to the other definitions. Meaning you always need to make use of for example Taylor series expansions which you can also do and then everything is going to cancel out nicely that, that's even shorter and so on to get yourself the desired result. But I hope you did enjoy it anyways and I hope this was a nice little refresher on first principle. I'm teaching this at the moment in my 12th grade. So that's a lot of fun, I suppose. And if you did enjoy today's episode on the advent calendar, then make sure to subscribe to the channel for more. Don't forget to check out NP Cooking. Yesterday's video for the advent calendar was over there. There was a very delicious episode and I'm at the next video. I wish you guys a fabulous day. See ya!